So hello, everyone. I think the most important thing which uh, humanity uh, invented was the primitive symbol, which gave us ability to store information and the share information. First, it was written. Then, 3,000 years after, it was uh, printed using uh, wooden blocks. Then, millennium after, it was automated and printing press appeared. Only 400 years after, printed press shrink to the size of typewriter. And in 100 years, typewriter became digital. So it gave us ability not only render text, but also create primitive text user interfaces using symbols. But not only, uh, it was used also for ASCII art at and at some point, uh, all these primitive text use interfaces involved into really great stuff, like uh, this uh, is example of Diet file browser uh, application. But in 10 years, these guys appeared with their own graphical user interface, and they just ruined this magic and this beauty of text interfaces. They brought their own window art, and blue screens. Actually, text user interface was just a step in evolution of graphical user interface. Because in the era of personal computers, uh, text, user, uh, text interfaces seen as user unfriendly and to sell a lot of personal computers, uh, it was required to implement something different, something more attractive to user. That's why graphical user interface uh, became more and more portable. They brought a lot of APIs for browser, for Win, AP, Qt, GTK, and so on. And at some point, it became easier, actually, to create a graphical user interface than text. If you think of it, you can just imagine uh, the difference. And text user interface is seen as a tool for hackers. Just if you try to imagine any movie about hacking Pentagon or all the stuff, you can just uh, remember the scene of text user interface. But why actually developers or hackers love text or terminals? Well, personally for me, it's faster to type than click and its ability to compose text streams, which comes from Unix era. And uh, I think text user interfaces are more flexible than graphical user interfaces, and way, uh, they way more simpler than graphical user interfaces. Uh, this screenshot of uh, WCAT graphical user interface can, I think, uh, clearly illustrate my last point. Uh, but actually, what happened to text user interface? What can we use now? And it appears that it, it's not limited. For every popular programming language, you can still find a tool or library and create this uh, magical text user interface. But uh, the drawback of it, most of them are, re are expected to you to write in an imperative style. And after using React, actually, I cannot imagine creating imperative user interfaces, even in a text. Another thing is that you, they are expecting from you to learn something which is different what, uh, from what I use in today. Uh, because they are expecting you to know their own uh, their names uh, domain-specific vocabulary or language. Uh, here is a great example of Blessed Chess uh, text user interface library. It gives you ability to create a really crazy stuff like this iframe-ish uh, sub-consoles, or I don't know, this drag and drops with shadow and opacity and all that stuff. 
But in the same time, it has uh, really big disadvantages. Well, for me, at least. Because it forces you to learn a lot. For example, if you want to render a really simple box with a blue background and white border, you have to define a style property with FG and BG uh, properties. And if you want to add a border, you have to put a border property as an extra thing. And it's not a part of style. And this last thing, which is tags, I really don't know what is it. Uh, another thing is a simple lab library which uh, has simple domain-specific vocabulary, so we can just dig into it in, in a few minutes and use it. Uh, one of them is in acquire, which used in uh, Yeoman tool, but the disadvantage of it, it's uh, under power. So you can only create a questionnaires using this library. And here is come a question. Why actually the good and powerful UI engines in general, not only in text, are challenging? Uh, in my opinion, I think uh, one moment is the layout math, especially if you want to create a uh, relative positioning with the dynamic box, with dynamic boxes. Another thing, big thing actually, it's a domain specific vocabulary which you can reuse uh, coming from another technology. So you can reuse your naming, your structure, your approaches, your build tools, and so on. And if you remember this comic from XKCD, which is about 15 extra standard, at some point, I thought we actually really need it. I cannot use the extra 40. And today I want to present you my idea as a text user interface powered by HTML. So, thank you. At some point I thought, is it actually possible to transform this div with some styling and content into box of text. Or transform this uh, advanced markup into advanced layout, reusing flex boxes or floats or what you want. Or even write something in JSX and transform this code into a real app. So basically what I did. So I've created Midnight Commander, if you remember this thing. Uh, it's a, a real cool file browser using React, CSS, HTML, and all technologies which we are using now. Thanks. It's able to scroll. It's real terminal, it's not a browser. It's able to, I don't know, resize. It's able to handle uh, coloring and text formatting using real libraries, uh, which is, in this case, is HighlightJS and React wrapper for HighlightJS. You can Actually, post, you can, oh, sorry, it's quit it. Can I just restart it? Well, yeah, you can use React Hot Lot or whatnot to just create such an apps. And one more thing, you can use uh, Chrome tools to change, for example, colors if you want on the fly. Just let me take this panel. Oh, sorry. And it will be applied automatically. <laughs> and of course, you can just destroy everything and kill all these panels. Yeah. So, 
So the question, how it works? Well, basically I'm just taking all these cool APIs from browser. I'm taking layout map, which is really, really complex thing. I'm taking the old stylus inheritance and so on. I'm reusing DOM event system and event bubbling and capturing if I want. And of course the document structure. So in order to transform this simple TF into box of text, at the first step, uh, I'm just shrinking it as much as possible. So it uh, shrinks to three to nine pixels and every symbol has a width one pixel and height one pixel, and the border has also width one pixel. And it's required to have a, such an ugly box in order to simplify the transformation. Basically, what, I, what I'm going to do next is just transform pixel by pixel to the text interface. Basically, uh, first, I'm just measuring this box using get computer styles, uh, get client directory, then I'm taking styles, then I'm rendering somehow uh, this box of text. What I'm doing, I have an array nine by three and I'm filling it with just blue boxes. Then I'm rendering the border so I know that Top border has uh, with one pixel and it's, uh, has color white, so I'm just drawing this line and so on for other borders. So I can just skip the right or left border and reusing uh, CSS rules for that. Another thing is a text node. It's a bit more complicated than just uh, handling the rendering the box. Uh, the only difference is that you need to measure the text using document create range and render it as you did with box. At the end you have three layers, just uh, background, border and text and you need somehow to deliver it to STD out. I'm using socket.io so it's really simple. Uh, in contrast to view, you have to receive STD events and project them on a DOM. Well, actually, STDIN is really powerful. You can not even have uh, keyboard inputs. You can also have mouse, scrolls, drag and drop, and so on. So uh, what I'm doing, I'm just reading from STDIN, serializing it then somehow, then transmitting to browser using socket.io, replaying them, and going to step one. Another big thing is uh, repainting because once you deliver to you your events, you change the DOM, and you have to deliver the changes to the client, to the STD out. Uh, actually, there are many ways to do that. Uh, the best is most after paint event, but it's limited by Mozilla architecture, so I cannot use it on a Chrome or in a, on any other browser. The simplest solution is request animation frame, but text user interface, it's not a game. We, can, we shouldn't have 16 FPS repainting and burning our uh, CPU. Another option is a mutation observer, but this guy handles only DOM changes. It doesn't know about input value property or scroll position, for example. But as I'm using React, maybe there is something which I can just uh, get from React for free. Uh, I thought there is something like component did update event bumbling, so it's a kind of perfect candidate to handle all these changes because once you are changing state or props, uh, you're expecting from app to re-render. But there is no such thing. The good thing is that we can hack React, and it's extensible, and yeah, let's do it. What we need to touch is a React reconcile transaction. Uh, in a nutshell, it's the thing which uh, restores the selection once you update in inputs. It also suppresses DOM events while, 
once you are just repainting, once React repainting uh, the DOM. And this guy is the source of component did update. So a uh, global source of component did update. So what we want is just to patch it or update it somehow. Uh, what we want to touch is this uh, transaction on DOM ready queue. And we want to change this notify all event uh, method. So basically what we want to update is this object to uh, create our own version of it so we can just transmit this event somehow. This guy is a callback queue. So we just subclass in it and uh, pass in this update to our event emitter source. And then we are just replacing the old React mount with our version of uh, Q and plugging into React. So if you want, you can just update it really easily. If you want to use, for example, request animation frame updates instead of immediate updates, you can just also patch uh, React updates. So what it handles, uh, it's really close to DOM after paint, because as I said, once you are updating React state or props, you're expecting from uh, your DOM to re-render or repaint. It also requires on wheel hack because React doesn't handle uh, diff or span positions on the screen, but it handles uh, values of inputs which also the same property on a DOM element. And if you're using uh, things like uh, React hot updates, uh, it won't be handled. Be for example, of uh, uh, yeah, because it doesn't know about style sheet changes. You can not do that. You have to re refresh your, your page if you want to get these updates. So, how it works from the end, uh, from the beginning till the end. So, at first step, you're measuring DOM and generating text user interface. Then you are just delivering it somehow to a study out, using Socketo in my case. Then you are somehow receiving SLD in events, and then replaying them on DOM and starting from the point one. So, it was really quick. Uh, I still have 13 minutes, and this is my last slide. So, uh, what I want to say at the end, that our text UI tool chain is not limited. We can use any library for creating text user interface. For Node, it's uh, Bless.js. It's a really good one. Uh, but in the same time, you can just reuse uh, technologies which, which you already know, like HTML, CSS, JavaScript to create text user interface. And this uh, React midnight command example is the kind of perfect illustra illustration for that. If you want, you can also create React text user interfaces in declarative style. And if you want to apply any possible modifications to React on a fly, you can easily do it without forking React because it's open and extensible using injections. Yeah, so that's it, thank you. If you have any questions, it's just, you have 11 minutes. Here is the link, but you cannot click it, obviously. But in the same time, you can scan this thing. Thank you. Uh, this app is just a proof of concept. I just tried to find the minimum possible APIs I want to take from browser in order to somehow uh, re-implement them and stop using DOM because DOM measurements and all these compositions really 
uh, expensive. So at some point, I want to make migrate to JS DOM first, and then go to pure React tree, and just leave DOM as it. And I'm just planning to create a re real platform for creating text user interfaces using uh, just HTML, CSS, and DOM. Yeah, I tried it, and it was kind of my first target, but at some point, it appears that it has really weird uh, font rendering. I'm just running it. Oh, it's not working. Sorry. <laughs> it, it has really weird uh, font rendering engine, so it, it requires some patching, but at some point, it will be able uh, to run this thing in Phantom Chess. Yes, at this uh, demo, it's uh, just a quick thing. Actually, here you go. I'm using a bit uh, of hack. As you can see, there is a client mouse mutation observer. So it also uh, watches for DOM properties, and once you update in styles, Chrome updates the style property. Any other questions? Have yeah, please. Something like CSS layout for figuring out the layout? Yeah, it's possible, of course. Once I, at this point, I already know which APIs I need from browser. Basically, it's just real layout engine and uh, basic styling. So I can just take them and replace. So could you recreate the links browser now with this? Links browser. Nah, it's already created, so what's the point? <laughs> yeah, I used browser in order to just re reduce uh, the things which I had to write. Basically, this layout's math. In, yeah, in React Native, they, they're using CSS layout, if I'm correct, and, and only flex boxes. So, and actually in this app, I use only flex boxes to position all these elements, so it can be easily done using, uh, without uh, browser APS, yeah. So yeah, thank you guys.